Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you are new here, hey, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you're back, as always, welcome back. Today, I am here with a really special post review for you all. And a post review is just where um, I take the chance to share with you all my uh, recently completed project, in this case, a diamond painting, um, and just go over with you some of the things I loved about the canvas and some of the things I was maybe a little more mad on. And most importantly, give you the chance to see what a particular canvas or project is going to look like once it is completed. Hopefully these videos just give you a sense for what to expect if you purchase from a particular company, even if it's not this exact same canvas. Um, this particular post review though, I want to make sure that I, I let you guys know right up front that this is of a mystery kit from Diamond Art Club. This video is going to have spoilers full spoilers of any and everything related to this particular kit. So if you have this kit in your stash, or if you're working on this kit and really don't want anything to be spoiled for you, please, 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 please click away. I really, really, really don't want to have this spoiled for anyone that doesn't want it to be. Um, I am also going to take some time in this video to share some of my learnings from working on a mystery kit, some tips and tricks that I have since your approach to it is just going to look a little bit different than a traditional diamond painting kit. Hopefully it'll make the process feel a little bit more accessible and less intimidating um, for those of you that haven't done one yet either. But anyway, this is, this is going to be the last chance, you guys. Like I said, you're going to see this canvas in its entirety. So this is of the most recent, as of the time of this filming, the most recent Diamond Art Club mystery kit that's been released. This was released in February of 2022. The artist is Josephine Wall. I'm going to share all of the other details about it, including unrolling this to show you guys starting now. So last chance, click away, and here we go. So <laughs> the name of this kit is actually Daughter of the Deep. Now, let me give you a quick rundown of all the stats on this particular kit. Uh, this was 70 by 89 centimeters. It had 63 colors and it had square drills. Now, inherently with a mystery kit, at least from Diamond Art Club, because you are working on a black and white canvas, the drills are going to have to be square. I saw this got, get asked a lot actually, like will they do any mystery kits with round diamonds? In Diamond Art Club's case, I really don't think so because if, if these were round diamonds, you would see the white background behind every single drill and it would really disrupt the artwork. Can we talk about how stunning this artwork is though? Um, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I'm just gonna show you guys a couple of different parts of the canvas while I chat a little bit more about just some general stats, like I said. Um, but one of the key things about a mystery kit is that the background is black and white. And while you can still get a sense for what the image might look like, so you can kind of make out patterns in the symbols and whatnot, um, you still truly don't know what the colors and the overall image are going to look like. If they were to do a kit like this with round drills, they'd have to add color to those backgrounds so that those wouldn't show through once drills were actually down. And if they added color to the backgrounds, you'd really be able to make out quite a bit of the image. I hope that, that makes sense. But um, this was stunning <laughs> to work on. And I am just utterly blown away by the rendering on this particular piece. Now, I wanna do two things for you guys right now before we get into the weeds a little bit more. Should I say get into the seaweed a little bit more? Is that too silly? <laughs> First, I wanna take a moment and I'm gonna pop up on the screen for you guys now a picture because I cannot get this entire completed canvas in frame for you terribly well. I'm gonna pop up a picture on the screen here for you guys of the this canvas completed by me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and also pop up a picture of the original artwork so you can see what that original artwork looked like. 
I was completely blown away when Diamond Art Club contacted me. Um, they do sometimes send me sneak peeks to share with you guys ahead of new releases. And when they contacted me and asked if I'd like to do a sneak peek for this particular mystery kit, they actually sent me the original artwork and my jaw dropped. I was like, oh my goodness, yes please. I love Josephine Wall's artwork. And I think that it would be so neat to do this one as a mystery kit. I think I mentioned towards the beginning of this video that I actually had never worked on a mystery kit before. I know that there are a variety of companies out there and there are more and more companies that are doing mystery kits now, uh, but I've always been a little bit hesitant, often because I feel like when you look at the background on a mystery kit, I feel like often you can tell exactly what the image is going to be. And depending on the company, you don't know if you're getting necessarily legally licensed artwork, and that's super important to me. And if it's not a company I'm familiar with, not only am I not sure if the artwork has been licensed from the artist, but also I have no idea what it's going to look like, like if the end result is gonna be worth the work. So when I saw that Diamond Art Club was doing a Josephine Wall kit as a mystery kit, I was like, okay, I'm all in because I know what Diamond Art Club's typical rendering style is. I know that they check all of these boxes as far as quality goes. Um, I, I know what I'm getting into and I know that the end result is going to be completely worth the work and the effort and the time that it's going to take to complete this one. Like I said, this was 70 by 89 centimeters, which is large and it was quite a time consuming process. <laughs> I think this one took me about two, a little over two weeks and I spent a lot of time dedicated to working on this. It was very, very confetti heavy. If you're looking at some of these sections with me, you can see like there are intricate details here in the coral at the bottom, um, in this seashell that she's holding, which look at how Diamond Art Club takes just a tiny handful of drills and makes an image out of it. Like that you could see what she's looking at here in the seashell. Um, there was so much confetti in every single bit of her hair, but I think that this, this is one of the most show-stopping, breathtaking parts of this entire canvas, quite possibly one of the most, like, impressive renderings that I feel like Diamond Art Club has ever done. Um, this was confetti galore, but can we please talk about how incredible the the end effect is with diamonds down like all of these tiny diamonds which these are white ab's dotted throughout this bit of her hair um and there's lots of white ab's all in the seashells and just dotted through here again confetti which meant it took a long time but oh my gosh so worth it I was speechless when I really took a minute and after I'd finished that, this giant section, really when I finished the entire kit, when I stepped back and just looked at that, I was like, this is just incredible. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I'm an art club. Uh, I was nervous at first that when I, cause I started at the bottom and worked my way up and I did a section that had like from her <laughs> mouth down. And when I started placing diamonds here and I was like, hold up, her skin tone is gray. Is that is that right? Is that really right? I went back and looked at the original artwork and was like, okay, I see it. Um, I tell people all the time, trust the process. And I decided to trust the process. I didn't freak out. <laughs> um, but it, I feel like, absolutely works in the context of this whole painting. When you look at all of the overall colors in this painting, the fact that she is underwater and she's the daughter of the deep, like she is clearly like this mystical, like magical being. It's like, okay, pale gray skin tone. Yes. Okay. I buy it. <laughs> um, I thought that the process of working on a mystery kit was fascinating. Um, so let me show you now what a section, a small section of this particular kit looked like. So you can see, in case you're not familiar, um, what Diamond Art Club's mystery kits look like. So I'm gonna pop a picture up here on the screen and you'll see that all of the symbols on the canvas are black symbols on a white background. Um, 
And like I said, sometimes your eyes can kind of piece together patterns in the symbols to make out parts of the image. But I worked on this section by section. I tend to section off my canvases with washi tape. That makes it feel a little bit less intimidating. That's just what works for me. It's not how you have to do it. If you're curious about how I section off my canvases with washi tape, I have a whole video dedicated to that. I'll link to it in the description below. Feel free to take a look. Uh, but, um, Tackling it in that sense, I feel like made it more manageable. Now, I feel like there was a bit of a learning curve with working on a canvas in this way, because at least for me, when I open up a new section to work on, I tend to look for, okay, what is the symbol that's standing out to me? And usually there's something about a particular color or something on there that catches my eye more easily and makes it go more quickly for me to pull that color and then place it where I see those symbols. Um, it just is training your brain to, to look at it a little bit differently and to work on a sort of different style of canvas when there aren't any color cues to go off of when you're looking at those symbols in just black and white, um, especially when there's tons of confetti. So uh, really early on, I ended up rearranging how I had my uh, drills kitted up. Now, normally I am one of those people that I just kit up all my diamonds in DMC order. I don't tend to organize them by symbol, though I know a lot of people do, but I very quickly realized that with this kit, organizing by symbol type was going to be a must. It was going to save my bacon. So let me show you what I ended up doing. I did kit up my Elizabeth Ward container here. I did get everything into one tray, but I ended up putting all of the numbers first and then did all of the letters in alphabetical order and symbols that looked enough like letters that I, you know, put them there like, oh, look, this is like a backwards lowercase r. This is like an upside down T. And then I, because we had all four of these corner symbols, I was like, those absolutely need to be right next to each other. <laughs> Same with three sets of arrows. And then these were all kind of like sort of miscellaneous sorts of symbols, you know, I had dots here and dots again, and then some like greater than symbols and like little hat symbols. So you can see how I roughly had this organized and this really, really helped. A suggestion that I have for if, and this applies to not just mystery canvases, but any canvases where you have really similar symbols like this that would really be way too easy to mix up. I recommend, so say I'm opening up a section that I'm working on, maybe I'm working at the top and so I'm working on the canvas upside down and I need to pull a color and it's the symbol. I'll take it out and I'll flip it to be oriented whatever direction I am working on the canvas so that, and I just, you know, drop it, <laughs> so that I know that this is the correct symbol for the section that I am working on. And I will leave the container sitting out while I work on that section, just again, oriented exactly how I have the canvas oriented so I know I'm not mixing it up. And I thought that was completely crucial when it came to this canvas, especially because if you look, it's not like these were similar colors. Like it would be extremely noticeable if I mixed up these two colors, like a pink and a gray. Um, so I strongly recommend if you work on, whether it's this canvas or another mystery canvas from Diamond Art Club that's all black and white symbols like this, I definitely suggest organizing by symbol, even if that's not something that you usually do. Um, I don't think I'm gonna now magically be a person who always organizes my kits by symbol, but if I work on another Diamond Art Club mystery kit in the future, I'm quite sure that I will do this again. You can see that I had plenty of drills left over in every color. We did have four ABs in this kit. So we had like this really pretty chartreuse AB this buttery yellow, this blue that was almost a Tiffany blue, and then of course white, which is kind of their <laughs> signature AB, I feel like, is 141. Um, and I thought that the placements on these were really nice, especially because when you look at this canvas, the colors are like pretty dark. Uh, this was like the one section that there was color blocking. <laughs> I think, was this 310 or 939? I think this was 310 and then kind of blended into other into shades of blue. Um, but there were pops of ABs. You can see they used white for outlining in a lot of the coral and up in her head piece. Where did they put the blue? I'm trying to remember 
was the blue up here in her head? Oh, no, there was some of the blue. We had all of the AB colors over here in the shell. There was blue right here outlining, yellow and white. That's chartreuse AB. Where did they hide that one? Over here in the seaweed with some of the chartreuse AB. Some of the yellow here in her earrings, white here, white all through her hair. Again, these little dots here. And then when we got up towards the top, when we're nearing, you know, like the surface of the water, there's chunks of that buttery yellow AB here, highlighting where that sun is peeking through the surface of the water. I thought that there were some really neat, like little details kind of hidden in this artwork. Little things like there's these cute little seahorses over here. There's these fish up here, the school of fish. Um, same thing when you look at the bottom, there are <laughs> some dark green fish down here that were easy to miss. This was actually a really difficult canvas to photograph because this had Diamond Art Club's new square drills, which are super, super, super sparkly. And even with completely indirect lighting, it's almost impossible to get pictures of this with without like shine coming from somewhere. <laughs> it was really tricky, honestly. So I feel like these fish, you didn't always see them well in pictures, but in the original artwork, it's so dark. I feel like you almost don't even see them at all. Um, things that I, I really did also like about this piece as well. I liked that they took the original artwork and they did make it a little bit just overall brighter. When I originally saw the that original artwork from Josephine Wall, I thought, okay, this is going to be a darker kit. Um, and I thought it might get a little tedious to work on potentially because of that, but they gave so much vibrant color in here, but in a way that I still feel honors the original artwork. So I did really like that decision on their part. A couple things that I was maybe a little meh on, um, the biggest one for sure, which you may have noticed as we've been looking at different parts of the canvas, maybe not, um, but there is a little bit of gapping, just a tiny bit of gapping that you can see those white lines in between some of the drills. Now I was not, I was not super, super, super perfectionist about placing these, even though generally I think of myself as actually placing my square drills pretty straight and pretty evenly. Part of it was that I just wanted to keep it moving. <laughs> But also part of it was like, I think no matter what I did, even if I would have tried to go back and recenter those drills perfectly, um, I think you still would inevitably have seen some of the, the these white outlining. You can even see it a little bit from a distance, so it is trickier. Let me try to get this up to you. This canvas is heavy with all these diamonds, so trying to share the show the middle of it is tricky. You can see again a little bit of that white gapping in there. That is because unlike your run of the mill diamond painting canvas, um, with the white background, that means that any gapping that there is, you will see the white. And it's so evident when you have dark diamonds. So the nice thing was that up, you know, towards the top <laughs> where there were lighter diamonds, if there was any gapping, you didn't really notice it. But with so much dark here, it was so easy to notice especially if these weren't placed exactly perfectly. And again, I don't think these were terribly placed, but um, yeah, so, but I think that, that is just part of Diamond Art Club's process. I will say a couple of things. So first, um, I prefer a tiny bit of gapping to having popping. Popping drills are when there isn't quite enough space on the grid and um, once you put drills down, they push up against each other and it fits so tight that they will just pop out of place because there's just not quite enough space. I would much rather have this tiny bit of gapping that you can't notice as badly from a distance um, than have popping drills. So I will say that. Also, um, the way the Diamond Art Club's canvases work and their approach to their diamond painting grids is that, and they said as much, um, I'm, I'm referencing, by the way, Miss Coffee did a post review video on her um, Diamond Art Club mystery kit. I won't give any spoilers about the particular kit. I'll link to her video though. But she had, she had noticed the same issue with some gapping with those white lines visible. She contacted Diamond Art Club about it and they confirmed that one of the things that they do is they know that once the poured glue, once you put diamonds down and they've had time to sit and set, the glue kind of sets and shrinks in a tiny bit. 
And so if they had it too small, you would have to worry about popping once the glue sets. So I will say that I do feel like the gapping that I'm seeing is less than when I completed this kit a couple weeks ago, because it has been a couple weeks since I actually finished this kit. Um, so I do think that is the case. I do also believe that Diamond Art Club has, at least since, probably since the release of this kit, don't quote me on this, please. They have said that they're planning on making some really minor tweaks to their grids again. So it's possible that future mystery kits will be just a tiny bit tighter so that you don't even see this. But like I said, please don't quote me on that. <laughs> that's not like a for sure thing. That's just something that I've kind of heard mentioned a few different times in like the Facebook um, Diamond Art Club VIP group. So, but it's, it's not enough that it would deter me from buying another one of these kits. And like I said, I'd much prefer this to having to deal with popping drills. So I will definitely say that as well. The only other thing that I was a little bummed about with this kit was the fact that it was limited edition. It sold out really, really quickly. And I don't know if this is just gonna be how Diamond Art Club does mystery kits from here on out. Um, but I thought it was just kind of a bummer that it, it sold out so fast. They had said up front it was gonna be limited edition, but I know that there are a lot of people that had wanted to get their hands on this kit and were not able to, and it's sad that it's not going to be restocked. But um, that just, that is what it is. That's not, again, that's not gonna deter me from buying from Diamond Art Club again, because again, this had, this was like the whole package for me. <laughs> I knew that the, as always, the drills were fantastic quality. Their new square drills are a dream to work with. Um, the canvas material is fantastic. You could see just now when I was kind of like folding and moving it around, um, and now it's still perfectly laying flat. Their canvas material is great. The glue, glue quality really is fantastic. Again, you saw me folding and whipping this canvas every which way, not a single drill has popped off. Like I am not gentle with my canvases. Um, and so I, I love that about Diamond Art Club as well. The drill field was super clear. So at least even though I was working with entirely black and white symbols, I did not have to worry about like, oh, can I, can I make out even what the symbol is? No, the drill field was perfect. Um, and of course, Diamond Art Club's kits all have their lifetime warranty. So if I would have run into any issues, I knew that as the original purchaser of this kit, um, or the original owner of this kit, I suppose, because they did send this to me as a sneak peek. But if you are the original purchaser of your kit, as if you run into any issues whatsoever, contact Diamond Art Club's customer service and uh, they will help you out. So <laughs> they'll get you taken care of. But anyway, you guys, uh, this is, again, this is Daughter of the Deep from Josephine Wall. It was a mystery kit from Diamond Art Club. I'm gonna pop the image of the completed canvas up on the screen for you here one more time so you can take another look. Um, unfortunately, this kit, like I said, it is sold out. So you can't get it any longer from Diamond Art Club's website. But I hope that these tips and thoughts that I shared, my learnings from working on a mystery canvas are helpful for you for future mystery kits. Diamond Art Club is planning to release more. The most, the best thing I can recommend for that is that if the, if they share what the artist's name is again, and if they share the theme and whatnot, if it sounds like something that you might want to work on and they've listed it as limited edition, I strongly suggest jumping on it as soon as it releases. Like I said, this one sold out, I think within an hour. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again to Diamond Art Club for sending this over. I loved getting to not only sneak peek this, but also to work on it. This was so much fun and I can't wait to do another mystery kit at some point in the future. I think it'll be super, super, super fun. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about whether it's about this kit specifically or about the process of working on a mystery kit. I would be more than happy to help. If you enjoyed this video, would you mind giving it a thumbs up before you head on out? And if you're not already subscribed and want to see lots more diamond painting content from me, including future post reviews and unboxings and tutorials and whatnot, uh, I'd love to have you as part of my little community here. Feel free to subscribe and you can hit the bell to be notified when I share new videos. All right, my friends, thank you again for watching. I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.